guys, welcome back to our channel. I'm Luke. I'm Cooper. <laughs> and, and we're, we're the Coil Twins. Twins. So today we are spilling the tea on all things New York City, gay, nightlife, all that kind of stuff. Gonna be giving you guys a bunch of little story times. Do people even do those anymore? Um, I think they're kind of cancelled. But you know what? We're just gonna be throwing it back, sitting down, and just telling you guys all of our experiences because we always get a lot of questions about this. Ever since coming out, I got really excited about doing this video yes, because yeah, yeah. the past few years we lived in New York City, went to college there, and we've had quite the experience of going out on the gay <laughs> nightlife scene, and we have been through it all, okay? Yes. Mm -hmm. Sugar daddies, crazy people wanting to fly us out across the country, like <gasps> literally everything we're gonna get into, like <laughs> we're gonna be going in and no one is safe, okay? No one. Before we get into this mess and the lashings of it all, Make sure to hit that subscribe button, yes. hit that bell, follow us on social media, it's all linked down below, you guys know what to do. Come on laundry list, we always go through it, just do it so we don't have to say it anymore. Okay, so let's do a little roll back to the beginning of our freshman year of college. And, you know, we weren't really going out on the gay scene that much, because no, 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 we no. didn't really know what we were doing when it came to that, we weren't comfortable <laughs> with ourselves, so you were not about to catch us out at like a gay nightclub or something. Oh no. So, you know, we were just having fun with our girls, and we were going to the street clubs and all of that. I think like you're turning into Sammy, uh, sweetheart. Oh my god, my girls have a good time doing I'm thinking a little bit. I mean, we just bet you'll ever you do your bad, you do it. Literally going out with our girls, having a good time, <laughs> and, um, I don't know if it's just a thing in New York City, or if it's just straight cold culture in general, straight culture, I can't. It is not the tea. Let's just be, let's be clear there. Okay? Literally, it was so boring. I'm like, why are people getting into this? We would go out to these clubs and there would just be promoters with these girls Ugh. and it was so boring. And they want you to pay all this money to get in. It's like, sweetie, I am not dropping a dime on this no. shit. Let's be clear here. Literally, it was night and day compared to the gay clubs that we eventually went to. Mind you, these were like the top clubs in New York City that we were yeah, going the to. Yeah, the very mainstream. The very mainstream, like, <laughs> one oak, like, oh my god. I'm just like, <laughs> going to one oak, like, I just met like Rihanna last Last night, like type of vibe, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> these places, they were very boring. And also, just like I felt bad for the girls there, just because like the culture, it was just so messy. The girls were like, treated like a piece. They of were meat. like preyed on by these older men that paid a lot of money to get into the club, mm -hmm. and it was just very messy. And like the songs they would play, would just, oh you know, my god, like, the songs you would just hear like turn down for what. <laughs> How about turn down and let's leave? <laughs> yeah, and let's no. leave. And I was like, oh, I guess it's just my life. This is boring. Because you know us, we need our Britney. We need our early 2000s boss. I need a song to sing along to. You know what I mean? <laughs> now, just keep in mind, when we were going to these places with our straight girlfriends, mm -hmm. I can't even, like, straight girl, I can't. <laughs> but, you know, gotta <laughs> paint the whole picture. Our friends. As guys, you were treated like a piece of dust in the corner. Like, oh, yeah. they don't mm -hmm. want you there. They want as much girls in there as you can. That so, is very true. I was just used to, like, being trash on the corner. You know <laughs> what I mean? Like the plastic bag. And that all changed when we went to our first, like, gay event, gay club. Well, let's, let's get into that. <laughs> let's, let's get into that. Because that's why you guys are here, aren't you? Okay. Should we go into the first night when we yeah, ever did? Yeah, so basically it was like one of our first nights out in college and we have our two friends from home and one of them, he's gay, and then our other friend, she was a lesbian. So yes! I mean, right? She was a lesbian. We were just a bunch of queers trying to hit the scene, you know? Yes. And our friend texted us, he's like, hey, we're going out, come with us. And we were not ready to go out. We were walking around in shorts and our Birkenstocks that basically look like Crocs, okay? So imagine us a little younger <laughs> with our like sunburned selves like back in the day when we used to tan. No, but Walking honestly this was before the spray tan moment so I was giving like, it was like in the end of summer so I was giving like freshly tanned like goddess but like also, I'm like, how did I even get into these places? But I don't even know. Well, anyways, I don't know how we got in. We had our fake little fake IDs. That are trash, by the way. But we were walking in with shorts and Birkenstocks. Like, how did they not to let that flow? We probably looked about 12 years old, like, sweetie, like, what was going on? But we got in somehow. I don't know how. I don't know. And we always say, if it's a struggle trying to get into the club, trying to get into the door underage, you know, if the fake ID it doesn't work because we all know ours were horrible. You just kind of have to finesse your way in. Worst case scenario, we would always <laughs> just kind of smile to the back of the room. Don't really make eye contact at the bouncer. Never eye contact. Never Act that. like <laughs> you're that bitch and you're like 26 years old. Yes. You do a little shimmy and just slide if your way If you just in. act like you know what you're doing, like you were there before you walk in. But of course, that's... 
a lot of times not the case. They'll start questioning you. Yeah. We have like one ID that was like different than the Our other. ID we were, struggles. We were from like two different states, and like we would just troll people. But we had divorced parents, even though we don't. And like we would, we would just like start trolling. We would get them the sob story, and then and they're they, like, just go in. Yeah, eventually they're like, eh, you're annoying, go in, you know. And but sometimes we would walk in too, and he wouldn't have an ID, but I would, and then I'd be like, oh, his is in the mail, and they'd be like, in the mail. I'm like, which means? I mean, I'm like, we would just like act dumb and just like walk in. And like, eh. I mean. But I will say it was a lot easier for us to get into the gay clubs because I don't know they're probably just like these suits going just like going just by like, yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah okay so the first night out we went in and it was such a big difference because we it was a in. culture shock it really was because you see the drag queens walking around I was like honey I'm home okay we walked in and then all of a sudden it was I, such a safe place for us especially at the time because we weren't even out yet per se yeah so we walked in and then I just remember seeing a big screen with Kesha and it was like da 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 talking about. <laughs> I was like, here we are, we have arrived. I mean, it was literally like I was home. Like, I walked upstairs and there's the big screen of Ariana Grande and all the gays are dancing to, I'm so into you. Oh, we do not I need those vocals. <laughs> wow. Basically, it was like a big difference, and I'm like, wow, like this is where I belong, and why would I ever step foot into one of those boring ass clubs again? So for the rest of freshman year, we went out here and there, not really that much. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was a cute girl. She but was cute. We weren't really that invested. It was just, it was just like, eh, whatever. It wasn't until this past year that we were really kind of invested into the whole gay scene, if you will, and we were going out a lot more, or at least attempted to. Attempted to, <laughs> and you know, a lot of different things happened. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I think we should just get into our whole sugar daddy experience. Should we just get into that. I feel like that's what people are probably here for. Okay. <laughs> so today I'm going to be talking about an experience about my sugar daddy. Stupid even saying that because well, I can't. I, you'll see. You'll I can't. See. I was a sugar baby, guys, <laughs> exposing the sugar baby lifestyle. I feel like I didn't know it was a thing until like a couple months ago that that's like a term like sugar babies and how they sugar. I am still a sugar baby. That's a term to mm. sugar. Like they sugar around. They're like. It's called sugaring. That's mm -hmm. what it's called. So I guess I was sugaring. <laughs> and you learn something new every day. Okay, so setting the scene for my whole sugar baby, sugar daddy experience. We were at like this really fun place downtown. We were with a group of our friends. We're having mm -hmm. a good time. Oh my god, my girls are having a good time doing anything a little bit. And it was getting towards the end of the night and like they weren't really playing the music I normally like. No, they liked. weren't. They weren't. It no. really wasn't a bop. And like sometimes you just have those nights where you're like, Eh, I'm ready to go home. I looked yeah. at Luke. I was a sober Sally and I was just ready to hit the hay So I'm walking out. I'm passing the bar out of nowhere I feel like a little <laughs> tap on my shoulder first of all who even taps people on the shoulder like that's just oh God. creepy <laughs> And I'm thinking it's Luke playing with me or one of my friends and I turn around and I'm like oh and it's this elderly man with white hair mm -hmm. And we don't discriminate. We don't discriminate. Mm -hmm. Okay, whatever. Get get your life. That's your prerogative. Get your life. Live your fantasy. Live your fantasy. Okay. He was clearly all by himself, so that was already kind of a red flag. And he goes, "Oh hi, can I treat you to a drink?" And I'm like, mm -hmm. "Um, no, no, thank you. I'm good. I'm actually gonna leave. Like, thank you anyway. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye." As I'm trying to walk away, he goes, "No, no, no, no. Sit down. Let me buy you a drink. Let, let me, let me, let me treat you to something." And I'm like. <laughs> um, sir, I actually have to go, so, you know, the Uber's outside waiting for me, I feel, like I, I feel like everyone has, like, that moment where, like, someone's trying to talk to you, and, like, you try to have, the, like, your escape route, like, oh, I think I'm gonna go to the bathroom, or, like, what was that, mom? Yeah, mom? but, like, you're in the club, it's like, mom, hello? And it's like, why, your like, mom what? isn't in the club, but you're just trying to get out, yeah. And then, all of a sudden, he kind of, like, grabs my arm, or, like, attempts to, and mm -hmm. I'm like, I, like, try to, like, pull away, and he's like, no, 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 no. I, I'm very generous. Not me. I want to treat you to a drink. Why don't you tomorrow night at five o'clock? Why don't Why don't I get your number and I'll take you out? And I'm like, <laughs> very generous, <laughs> sir. What is what? Like, what are you saying? Oh God, I literally do not have the time to deal with this. Like, how do I escape this <laughs> not man? Today. I mean, the first thought that rolled through my head was like, not me. I am a grown man. I am an independent woman. <laughs> You know, Beyonce raised me. I, I don't need anyone to support me. I don't need any generous yes. people in my life, sweetie. So you can go, go hit off. the door. But you know, I'm calm, cool, and collected. I'm like, no, sir. Like, I think I'm just gonna go. Like, bye. And he goes, no, 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 no. And I like literally ran away. Oh, I'm God. like, I'm <laughs> not dealing with this. Good night. Escape route. <laughs> And then I ended up going to the bathroom and I was like dying at this encounter So I actually made my way around like the other side of the bar and I'm telling Luke and my friends which No, but happens. I remember before you, you even told us I remember seeing a man 
walking around in the vicinity with a cane. I know, he literally had a cane. And I'm not even gonna lie, he yeah. looked like the old man from the movie Up. Like, just picture yes! that man. Yes! Literally. That's what he looked like. Someone come and collect their grandpa. So after Cooper told me the story, we were like, okay, let's leave. We are gonna leave anyway. We're bye. So we are walking out past the door, and then that's when someone taps me on the shoulder, and I'm like, who is this? Like, I thought it was one of my friends. And I turn around, and it was the man that Cooper was telling me about, the guy that looked like Up, and I was like, what? It's like, Hey, hey, you, you, you. I he think probably thought he was me, even though I was like five foot in front of him. And this is like a live reenaction of what I did. I just kind of turned around and I was like, <laughs> yeah. It's just so awkward. And then this guy, I kind of like scrambled away. I was like, oh no, not me getting dragged into this mess. I don't know about you guys, but the next day after like a night out or whatever it is, I'll always kind of like check my messages, mm -hmm. my DMs, and I'll look at my message requests. And I get a message request from like an unknown name. It was like oh a God. blank profile. <laughs> there was like no like icon and it's literally the man from the night before oh, he had God. two pictures up i actually i would show you guys the messages but i blocked him after this happened so i can't even find him anymore mm -hmm. but he had like two blurry pictures i don't even know it was of like an awkward it selfie is. it was like <laughs> sorry and it was clearly this man and i'm like how did he find me on instagram like this is really weird like how did he know my that name that is weird how did he find you like it's still That's kind weird. of creepy yeah. i don't know so I'm looking at the message, and the first message is like, I'm very generous, how much money can I offer you for tonight? And I'm like... Oh <laughs> Sir, no, you, no amount of money is getting me to go with you tonight. Like, you are oh just God. creepy. I'm That's sorry. Just it's just weird. The whole thing was a mess. So, you know, yeah. he got that quick block, and I'm like, oh my God, I was literally, I could have been a sugar, sugar baby. baby. Like, that was a missed opportunity. So at that same time. But honestly, if you were, like, a normal YouTuber, you could have, like, took that opportunity, ran with it, make a whole big story time. I remember, like, watching Trisha's story times. My sugar daddy experiences. My sugar daddy. And then, like, they would put, like, with live footage, not clickbait. Like, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe we're just bad YouTubers. I'm like, like, now in hindsight, I wish I wouldn't have blocked him. I wish I would like went on the date with him and like got material. But that's evil. Come on, that's evil. It's evil just for a YouTube video. So it's like, whatever. I'll save him time. I'll save myself time. So we were telling our friends, and they were saying how yeah, like a lot of people they know, like the New York City gay scene. I guess like it's a thing. The sugar daddy, sugar baby. People come in from like other states or like across the country. Mm -hmm. Like they come to the city. They have no money, and they look for an elderly man a lot of times with a lot of money. Mm -hmm. A sugar daddy is usually a guy who will provide you gifts. They pay them, like a lot of times, like it's yeah. maybe for sexual things, or sometimes it's just like they get paid for their time. Or money, or some sort of compensation. Or they yeah. send pictures. I, I don't even know what the arrangement is, but it's that's crazy. a whole another it, That's world. a whole another world. Yeah. So at this point, we were kind of going out maybe once every two weeks, once every week, here and there. I mean, some people might think that's a lot, but... There are I people, mean, like, that's their whole life, and then you start to question... They go out every single night, and you're like, oh, okay. You're like, what do you even do? How are you making your money? <laughs> and it's just like, that's like, the wait, thing. How? Does not add up. Just going out here and there, you really do start to recognize a yeah. lot of familiar totally. faces. Just... You, you know? realize how small, like, the gay scene, if you will, in New York mm, City actually yeah. is. Like, it's a very small bubble, and everyone kind of knows everyone, per se. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. Or, like, at least you know faces. Keep in mind, we are so very new to it. Like, we're literally 19 years old, like, going mm. to these places. Like, yeah. it wasn't until my good friend told, I'm not gonna say his name, but, like... I know you're watching this. I live for you, obviously. But he told me this tea that was scorching hot. And Boiling. I was like, oh my god, I did not believe it. But I was like, you know what? I knew, I knew there was something up. So I'm gonna expose that a little bit right now. He was telling me how he found out through the grapevine, through his friends, like through reliable sources. Very reliable very sources, reliable mind sources. you. Apparently there's this thing where a lot of the famous people in the gay community, gay mess, if you will, they, they're like Instagram famous. The Instagram like that models, kind of thing. like the people that are busily big on Instagram. Even there's like some people like on YouTube that like have like this very like oh like mm -hmm. I'm so sweet and innocent brand mm -hmm. but then we would see them out at these events and we're just like oh okay. You know, I no, I can't even say it. I can't even say it. <laughs> maybe oh, for yeah. another video. Yeah, maybe for another video. We can't ruin our YouTube career yet. Come I on. Could, yeah. Basically, like, there's these parties at the clubs, but then there's the after parties, and that's where... And when you get down. invited to an after party, it's no. <laughs> no. Do, do not go. <laughs> I mean, maybe if you're about that life, if, if you're trying to feel your oats a little bit, but no. you go to these after parties, and that's where all these famous people... Famous. Not me. They end up having these huge-ass orgies, and... I don't know if like you're too young to know or like I don't know the Just look it up it. if you don't know what an look orgy it up. is. And my friend said that he got like a Snapchat or something of just like a bunch of like shoes on the ground and I was like, Oh my god, like you can only tell from there, like 
<laughs> this one man that yes, always holds these yes. at like his apartment. And apparently, like sometimes there's these like underage people there, mm, and yeah. they're just waiting for him to get exposed because apparently it's like illegal, like what he's yeah. doing. Like, and keep crazy. in mind, like I don't know who these people are that do this. I have no idea. I just heard it through the grapevine mm -hmm. through my friends. So. Who knows, but apparently it's very reliable, and I'm like, oh god. So concluding this video, we're going to share a little experience that happened to us. And as you can imagine, the more and more you go out, you know, there's more promoters that are like, oh, we want you to come to this event, come to this event. People are always kind of in your DMs like, oh, come here, da 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 da, -da. Mm -hmm. This one guy, we met, and he wanted us to come out and to come to this one event of his. Mm -hmm. And it was fun, it was, it was whatever, you We know. went with, like, our two friends, because we're never mm -hmm. going to go alone, you know? And I guess he has, like, a lot of money somehow. I mean, I don't know what he does. What is your job? I dated a billionaire. I mean, it's Apparently, just... he's, like, a manager for... For someone, okay. Yeah. For, like, an... Like, it's, like, someone that was famous, but, like, they're D-list, like... Maybe has been, I don't know. So, after we went out with him, with our friend, keep in mind, it was, like, a group thing. Yes. It wasn't anything, I guess he like, thought it was yeah. more than that? I don't know. Nothing it's happened. Like, no. And he just kept on texting us and badgering us to go out with him again, and I was like, Sudi, no, I have... Work, I have school, I do it like, like, no, a while, like it's Monday, Tuesday night, I have stuff to do, yeah. I'm not going out with you again. My biggest pet peeve is when people try to impress you by saying like that where they've been or like all the people you know they've taken pictures with or with all the parties they go to, it's like all these famous people. It's like I don't care, that doesn't impress it's me. It's like a Shania Twain. That don't impress me. It's like, you really think I'm that child, like, that's how you're gonna impress me? It's like, no, be, like, a cool, be nice person. Be a person, maybe. Be a and person, don't, don't be... Oh, well, I took Britney Spears to this place, and I brought, uh, Justin Timberlake to this place. It's like... Stop. <laughs> Mind you, I'm not a big texter in the first place. I'd rather just talk in person. Even like our two close friends from home, we really don't even text that much. Mm -hmm. But this person was every day texting us, oh, let me bring you to LA. Let me bring you to this event. Sending me gifts. Oh, why aren't you answering? It's like, why can't you take It's like, sweetie, hint? leave me alone. I felt like Chris Cocker, like, leave Brittany alone. Leave Brittany alone. Leave me alone. Like, seriously. But this man would not give up because apparently he jet sets around the world. And Apparently this is a thing too, where mm -hmm. promoters will find younger people or whatever it is, yes. and they mm -hmm. want to fly them out to cross country and all this stuff. And you're always like, so what's the catch? It's like, if I want to go to LA, I want to go to LA at my own expense. Yeah, and it's I like, I don't like you. Like, let me, I want to, if I want <laughs> to go, really with some, if I want someone to fly me out, I'll, like, I'll, I want to like that person at least. Like, but I'll fly out yeah. on my own, okay? Because I do not need you to go to LA or go around the world or live my life, okay? It literally just got to the point where, like, every day it's like, oh, I'm gonna bring you to this place. Yeah. I'm gonna fly you to this place. Why are you there? And it's just like, and honestly, sorry. we could get into more details that are like really funny. But I just, so, I want to make it a little bit more vague because I think he definitely watches our videos. And maybe I, I don't want to uh, do it on that. So if you're watching, hi, yeah. <laughs> hi, bitch, hi, bitch. But, um, <laughs> seriously, like, it just got to a point where, like, I just like. I kind of ghosted him and like just stopped answering yeah. and I think he got the memo maybe I but, think he got the memo but that's just like a thing but he just would not give up oh my like God. a lot of like your favorite Instagrammers and all these people and models they they can't afford that lifestyle where they're jet setting mm -hmm. around the world let me tell you that so there's always a catch involved anyway yeah. so I think that's it on us that's exposing it. like the gay nightlife. I mean, we could probably do a whole nother video. Yeah, if you guys there's have, so many stories. If you guys have questions, we'll definitely maybe do a mukbang and we'll do a part two or yeah. something if you guys want that. But anyway, so I think that's it for today's video. I think that's it. I think the tea was spilled enough. <laughs> it was spilled, yes. Thank you guys so much for watching. That's a wrap.